Boy, did I pick the wrong day for bathroom duty. I don't know what Mark's been eating, but I saw things moving around in there. Uh, it was like a scene from Aliens. Maybe I should switch with Jay and do trash duty instead. Less hazardous. Hey, Scotty. See, you got bathroom duty again. I'm sorry. Sure did. By the way, did anyone ever teach you to flush? Well, Scotty, they tried to teach me, but I dropped out of the class. Huh. Okay, that was very strange. Why would I say that? I'm uh, sorry. What's with the uh, notebook? Keeping a list of all the chicks that dumped you in high school? Uh, dude, who are you talking to? I really have no idea. Uh, okay, well, anyway, I'm actually writing a musical. Get out of town. Uh, no, I'm serious. No, I mean, really, get out of town. No one deserves that sort of punishment. <laughs> okay. That's pretty annoying. Yeah, I know. For some reason, I can't help making really lame comments. It's kind of creeped me out. Man, this is creepy. Tell me something I don't know. <laughs> All right, where the hell is that even coming from? <laughs> hey, guys. Yeah. Oh, come on. It's a little much, isn't it? It's only Jay. <laughs> well, anyway, I have been down in the lab waiting for that equipment that I sent you for about 20 minutes ago. Hmm? Oh. Sorry, boss, I got sidetracked. By what? A piece of string. What the heck just happened? Don't ask. Oh, and what about the equipment I asked for? Look, I just, I want to jot these lyrics down while they're still fresh in my head, all right? Look, there's nothing fresh in any part of your body. <laughs> no. You can smell the proof on the tip of my plunger. Oh, so, uh, Look, since when do we have a laughing audience? Since when do we have an audience? Okay, that's it. I'm going downstairs. Hold on, hold on, hold on. What are you doing down in the lab? You're building another woman? Uh, just because Linda Mach 2 dumped me. Whoa, 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 mean... whoa. Linda Mach 2 dumped you? Uh, yeah. We didn't even know you finished her. I didn't. <laughs> How's that even funny? It isn't. Well, wait, you mean she dumped you before you even finished her? It looks like your love life is malfunctioning. <laughs> Hey, whatever. This time, it'll be different. I will not make the same mistake with Linda Mach 3 that I made with Linda Mach 2. Which was? Giving her a brain. Oh, that was cold. No, actually, he's right. All right. I think that's good for now. Don't want to overdo it. If only you had that same attitude about eating Doritos. Okay, what are you writing anyway? It's a musical version of my favorite movie of all time. Plan 9 from Outer Space. Okay, now I've really heard everything. <laughs> Seriously, if this keeps up, I'm gonna shoot myself. I'm gonna shoot you as well, also. Plan 9, are you crazy? That movie sucks. Well, that's too bad, because I had you in mind for the lead. That movie rocks! <sighs> Waiter, check, please. Oh, and now I think I really hate myself. We hate you, you too. too. No, the phone's ringing. Guess the boss is calling. Ugh, now what? Well, it ain't to sell us any toothbrushes. <sighs> wait, wait, what? What? What does that even mean? Toothbrushes. Hello, sir. What's it doing over there? Yeah, I don't understand it either. I mean, suddenly we're saying all these awful puns and cliched quips, and there's a, like this audience in here that's booing and laughing at us. It's like being on the Tonight Show. Except funny. <laughs> that's our Scotty. All right, so what the heck is going on? We hit a generic sitcom switch? Uh, well, whatever it is, it can't get any worse. Well, kiss my grits. <laughs> That's just dynamite. OK, maybe it can. So what can we do about it? A countdown on obscure TV shows? Are you sure about that? All right, well, you're the boss. OK. Well, that's it. OK, but what about the problems we have going on here, right now? What problems? Well, 
you and I drawing a line down the middle of the room, you on your side, me on mine. Scott having to take two girls to the prom at once, trying to replace mom's porcelain horse with a replica while Scott loses his glasses, and you figuring out what to do with Timmy's goldfish while we all retire to Florida where my mom will move in unexpectedly and... Uh, uh, well, what I do? Oh, no. Oh, the sitcom setting is overloading. Uh, it's gonna blow! That's what she said! Well, that's gonna leave a mark. <laughs>
the slightly smaller silver screen. Some of us got beat up so bad we made a revenge list when we got older. But there was a time where the only superheroes you saw on television were either camp camped up like Superman, Batman, or Wonder Woman, or just suffered from a shoestring budget like Spider-Man or the Hulk. Some of us then acted on this list, and set and peasants have since gone missing. But one show often overlooked did try to bring life to the superhero genre in the 80s and 90s. That classic Scarlet Speedster known as The Flash. Missing forever thanks to some people knowing the right place to bury bodies far up north where no one in a million years could ever find their rod. Alright, dude, dude, enough. enough. Sorry. The Flash was an attempt of bringing another DC character to life after the immediate success of Tim Burton's Batman. Though this show ran out of speed all too quickly, it did manage to stay true to some of the classic storylines. The suit looked good, and John Wesley's ship made a great Barry Allen. But with limited special effects, the show never got the chance it deserved. However, with a new series out and it enjoying success, it has since given its predecessor and its stars new life. Characters and actors have hopped from the old show to the new show, giving them the credit they finally deserved. And a good thing too, because some of those goofy episodes would never match the seriousness of super shows and movies of today. Deep Sage jumps around like a cat. With a will of iron and a body of steel. It's hammer time. This is why Superman works alone. See what I mean? Sucked. Number eight, Sledgehammer. Trust me, I know what I'm doing. No, you don't. I trust my drug dealer more than you. First off, that was a catchphrase from the next show I'm about to do. And second, Scott, I am your drug dealer. Oh, yeah. By the way, you got the, the shit. You, 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 you couldn't have picked a worse time. Man. Guys, no. for the last no. time, Doritos are not drugs. Oh. Hmm. Not even Cool Ranch? Please, just keep going. OK. Let's face it, nothing beats a good television catchphrase. Of course, the one I previously uttered registers with very few people, like Sonny and Cher here. That's because it belongs to Sledgehammer, a show that is equally lost in the minds of many television viewers. Wait, can I be Cher? No, whatever makes you happy. Sweet. Sledgehammer is about a shoot first, ask questions later cop in a show that was handled like a comedy version of Dirty Harry, who lived for guns, violence, and all the cross the line law enforcement action he could get his hands on. The show's humor toward violence may explain its quick decline in ratings. It seemed many people were just not ready for it yet. Like many of the shows on here, had it come out today, odds are it would have found itself more of an audience. Today, graphic violence and plot lines stitched with both comedy and tragedy are far more prevalent. However, thanks to DVD, Sledgehammer has found itself a cult audience, proving that any show, with the aid of time, has a chance of finding a home. Except maybe this show. Yeah, especially this show. I'd make a great share. I got the height. Yeah. Number seven, Hi Honey, I'm Home. Our generation grew up on watching Nick at Night, and because of that, we were reintroduced to some classic shows, such as Get Smart, F Troop, The Dick Van Dyke Show, and Alfred Hitchcock Presents. Good evening. Yeah. Occasionally, however, Nick at Night would try its hand at some new shows, uh, one of them being a very strange sitcom that, unlike the rest of the network's broadcasting, never stood the test of time. Hi Honey, I'm Home is a story about a 50s-style sitcom family, a la Ozzie and Harriet, finding its way into modern America. Though the clash of the 50s suburban entertainment with the stark hardships of reality made a great premise, for some reason it never seemed to catch on and was eventually forgotten. But again, the show's theme was another example of wrong place, wrong time. For though the show never lasted, its concept managed to find its way into a far more popular movie many years later. Let me see that. What happened? I'm not sure. <gasps> Look at me. I'm pasty. We're in Pleasantville? No! We're supposed to be in school. We're supposed to be in color? Number six, three, two, one, contact. Of course, another classic form of entertainment is the always important educational program. 
And while shows like Sesame Street, see I said it right that yeah. time. Yeah. They made right. fun of me because apparently I say it wrong. Yeah. Mr. Rogers Neighborhood and Reading Rainbow have always remained top pioneers of our generation. Some never seem to get the credit they deserved. 321 Contact is a perfect example. What about Barney? Fuck Barney. Many have called this show the 80s electric company. And much like its 70s predecessor, Contact mixed education and science with fun. There were learning segments, skits, and most notably the mystery sub show that told the continuing adventures of the Bloodhound Gang. You and me, baby, ain't nothing but mammals, so let's do it like they do on the Discovery Channel. No, not, not them. No, this Bloodhound Gang were a bunch of young super sleuths that solved mysteries. Much like Scooby-Doo. Without the dog. And the subliminal drug use. And Daphne's ass. I don't care, she was hot. Though 321 Contact never received the praise its fellow public access shows were flooded with, it's still a great show and still holds up for younger audiences, despite not being a CGI-created fuzzy animal thing or an annoying, screaming Spanish girl with a bowl cut. Look, Boots! We're in fairy tale land! It's un lugar maravilloso! Number five, Werewolf. If you were to imagine the Bill Bixby Hulk show and replace the Jolly Green Giant with a ferocious werewolf, then you would have this lost treasure of a show cleverly titled... Werewolf. Actually, this is a must-see for horror fans, especially those like myself who are obsessed with werewolves. Again, the show is very similar to the Hulk in story. A young man named Eric is bitten by a werewolf and spends the series trying to take down the werewolf responsible for his curse. Along the way, he comes across folks he ends up helping, making him a sort of werewolf superhero. But the true star of the show are the great werewolf effects, which for the time are excellent. Sadly, the show never saw past a first season. Bummer. Like so many cult horror shows like Kolchak the Night Stalker or Point Pleasant, Werewolf may have been too intense for audiences back then. Plus, mainstream TV never really embraced the horror genre as it does today. But with all these old shows coming back, who knows? Maybe this one will be remade someday. I can always dream. I dream we get through one episode without you talking about werewolves. I dream you take those hobbit feet of yours back to the Shire. Hey, I said that was the last time. You both have horrible feet. Let's move on. Number four, today's special. Many of us now older, some with children, uh, have had to sit through some strange cartoons these days. We shake our heads and do that old people thing where we say, eh, in my day, our cartoons are much better. And that's all completely true. Definitely. Though, yet even some of our stuff was pretty well... <laughs> torturous. But perhaps the best example in this realm of children's show obscurity was this very strange cross between the Muppets and the movie Mannequin, a little genetic anomaly called Today's Special. Mixing puppetry with live action, Today's Special featured a department store owner who looked a lot like Lena Horne, who actually befriends a mannequin who had the ability to come to life thanks to a magic spell cast by a mouse. Yeah, I like the drugs the writers were on when creating this little trippy opus. The only ones to know about this secret is the talking magical mouse and a security guard who looks like a cross between Kenneth Toby and Mr. McFeely and who also had hair and a mustache that resembled soggy shredded wheat. But the strangest thing about this show is its time slot. It was on super early, like one of the first things to come on after the morning national anthem. That was a thing. It was like a dirty secret the network tried to hide, and if you ever watch the show, you'll know why. Number three, Herman's Head. Fox has had its share of hits and misses, and for a lot of them, good riddance. But for a few, we were sorry to see them go, mainly because many people today have never heard of them. One example was the very funny Herman's Head. Starring that dorky kid from Fright Night as Herman. Please, Mr. Vincent, shit! <laughs> Sorry, couldn't resist. This show gave us a little insight to those voices in our heads, those emotions that bicker and quarrel with one another. 
leading our protagonist through some hilarious and awkward situation comedy. The writing for a sitcom back then was actually fun, and the cast of actors designated to Herman's emotions were great to watch. Yet, despite a few successful seasons, the voices in Herman's head were soon silenced by cancellation. However, like Hi Honey, I'm Home, Herman's Head's concept managed to live on, most recently in the family hit film Inside Out. Did you guys pick up on that? Sure. Oh, oh. And signal the husband. <clears throat> Uh-oh, she's looking at us. What did she say? Oh, sorry, sir. No one was listening. Is it garbage night? Uh, we left the toilet seat up. What is it, woman? What? Number two, obscure remakes. Let's face it, folks. Remakes and reboots seem to be this era's entertainment revolution. And by revolution, I mean crap. In television, we've seen it happen in shows like Hawaii Five-0, Beverly Hills 90210, and The Odd Couple. And while some have enjoyed success in the ratings, many have not. Today, no show is safe from the clutches of unimaginative network execs. We saw a remake of cult classics like V and Kolchak the Night Stalker. Maybe better production value, but boring as syrup. I'll go back earlier and you'll see remakes of Knight Rider, Get Smart, and The Love Boat. Three shows that needed a remake like Brad Pitt needed a motivational speech. Hell, Twilight Zone's been made like three times. In the end, it comes down to the age-old question, why mess with a good thing? If anything, try remaking some of the awful shows that have come and gone. Here's a list. That is a lot of shows. Scott, this is just our show, typed over and over. It's just the first episode. Okay. Mm. And that brings us to our number one show. Perhaps the show is the greatest example of TV oddity that makes its way into our homes and hearts. Number one, you can't do that on television. Yes, you can't do that on television. Sure, it may be more well known than some of the other television shows on our list, in fact, it was on for 11 years. Our generation certainly knows about it, but the generation today probably doesn't even know it exists. The show began as a local children's variety show in Canada, each with a central theme to tie everything together. Veteran comedy actor Les Lai played numerous recurring characters and was one of only two adults during the run of the program, the other being actress Abby Hagard. The show went national, then eventually a new and upcoming children's network known as Nickelodeon decided to bring it to America, where its popularity soared. Plus, the show was pretty raunchy and touched upon some rather bizarre and dark issues that included chefs sneezing into hamburgers, then serving them. I heard that. Child executions. Ready, aim. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Stop the execution. Weird and abnormal looking parental figures. Lisa, don't encourage your mother. And a young Alanis Morissette, which actually explains a lot with her if you think about it. The show was unlike anything out there at the time for kids. Where is the school board guy? Why did they keep sending them to me? In the end, it just seemed like a show trying to have an endless good time with no limits. Nothing was too silly, stupid, or gross for this show, and the creators pulled out all the stops. Anything that could be used for shock value was used to its fullest. One thing that people may not know is it was the show that created for what eventually became the trademark of Nickelodeon itself, which was the green slime that would fall from above on whoever said the phrase, I don't know. <laughs> And that wraps up another episode of The Franken Zone. Tune in next week as Scott enters a beauty contest while I run for mayor, and Mark is confronted by his high school sweetheart, and oh my god, we really need to get this thing fixed. Oh god, yeah. That's what we said about our dog. Ooh. <sighs> How the hell do we stop this? I can't take much more of this blandness. We need to figure something out, or we're going to be stuck in lame quips and situation comedy to the end of time. Or until we're canceled. <laughs> Wait a minute, I've got it, quick. What kills it comes faster than anything? Michael Rappaport. No, no, no. Jumping the shark. <sighs> of course. When sitcoms jump the shark, they tend to die out. Brilliant. Send in the shark. Send in the shark. Send in the shark. But what are we, the Wonder Twins? To... Send in the shark.
Uh, one of us has to press the button, don't they? <clears throat> sorry, sorry. Did we do it? Is it over? I don't know. Mark, say something funny. Hmm? Oh. Uh, did I do that? Yes, we did it. <sighs> yes. Thank God that's over with. Boy, you said it. Damn right. <laughs> Sorry I'm late, guys. Uh, crap it. <laughs> the hell? <laughs> uh, so what's cooking? Besides me, I mean. Oh. oh God, I thought we <laughs> fixed it. We did. We just forgot the one drawback in canceling a sitcom. A, a spin-off! Spin <laughs> 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 it's a living. <laughs>